All right, everybody. How's it going? You are now listening to Uncontested with Rob and Mania. I am Rob. And I'm the Lord of Insanity. <laughs> Mania. Mania, which is Mania, who has been getting into fights on other people's YouTube channels, I found out for the past, like, what, month? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for the past month. Yeah, people uh, don't like my opinions. On what channel is that? If you if you want to go find it, it's um, it's a fun video. It's like it's it's 176 comment plus uh, on a video about Star Wars and people are really really brutal in this comment section to each other it's great but that has nothing to do with the show we're talking about today but it does because it's debate um, it's not the same mania we see here though that's for sure a lot more colorful language uh, <laughs> <laughs> but all right. Um, but today we have a few good topics to go over. We it's sort of been a slow news week, unless like you want like the minute de- like the minute details of free agency. It's not very good, I would say. Um, but we do have some stories, and we'll cover those. We have the biggest story in our opinion, which is the Colin Kaepernick. We're going to discuss that. Um, what the collusion lawsuit means for the NFL. What it means for Colin. Should he be back? Which is pretty much obvious. Yeah, but we're going to talk about it, and we're also going to talk about what team will sign him. And then we'll move on to, we'll give our quick thoughts on the Antonio Brown dramas, the uh, Odell Beckham situation, if he'll be traded to the Patriots or anywhere else. Um, Then we will cover the AAF. We'll go over our power rankings, which is something we do weekly now. And then we will cover the AAF, some stories around it, how it almost folded this week, what it means for the future of the AAF, the stability of these formed like football leagues that don't really have major financial backing cbs kind of just randomly got weird and one of the guys pulled out and it sort of almost doomed the league so what does this mean for leagues like this um so we'll talk about this and more when we get to our show um since i've done all the talking we will actually start the show with mania talking about his favorite athlete colin kaepernick and um what the collusion lawsuit means for the nfl and if he should be able to play again Go ahead, Mania. Hey, for me, uh, Colin Kaepernick, it's uh, the collusion case. Well, the NFL has had some pretty uh, interesting cases in the past, and there's, and honestly, there, it's been controversy after controversy, and it's just like another thing on the list. Like, I'm not sure if it will really mean anything in the grand scheme of things, considering uh-huh. how much has happened in the NFL. That's fair point. Because like, yep. there's... Uh, yeah, but like the, I, f- I feel like this is like the end of the burnout, honestly. It's like if there's like anything that the controversial about him coming back or not, it's like a, just people, it's just like a light in the fire again, like final burst before it finally goes out. Does you think really like feels- this is the end of it? You think this is the end of the drama, regardless if he signs? This really doesn't mean anything other than the end of the Ka- Kaepernick drama to you. Yeah, I feel like it's the end. If he signs or not, like there will be like an initial again spark of flame where there's either outrage one way or the other, and it'll just die out. It's it's just the NFL uh, has had so many different controversies, and in this one, just doesn't feel as big, really big in the grand scheme of things of the NFL. I do think that it, in the long run, if they don't get uh, their act together with stopping controversy, because it's most of the controversy is how they're inconsistent 
that's it. The refing is inconsistent. Uh, the rules don't make sense. And those are fine inconsistencies because you can fix those. It's, you know, part of the game, really bad refereeing, bad calls. You know, those are fixed. Yeah. It goes deep into it toward the players where it's inconsistent on whether or not a player gets suspended for nine months or suspended for like only a couple days. Yeah, it's, or it's like, or like um, if players are being blocked from signing with certain teams because, you know, the league doesn't want them in the league because it's bad for their personal business. It gets everything's going to be weird. Everything's it's, it's it's just everything's really inconsistent within the league. And with two leagues popping up, uh, I think it's uh, the NFL partnering with them is pretty smart, but it may hurt them in the long run because the XFL and the AAF, uh, one of the leagues by itself may not be able to challenge the NFL, but if the NFL does not get out of the controversy stages where everything's a controversy, they may end up struggling in the AAF and XFL together may be able to overtake the NFL, which is, would it be good for the NFL? Uh, I'm not too sure about that one, but I understand what you it, mean. If the if, if these two leagues can form together and and be um, a good adversary to the league, because um, it's less controversial, less problems, it sand it it handles its business much better than the NFL. You think it could be? You think this lawsuit is essentially a very dangerous thing or a very nonchalant thing? You're not too sure. It's one or the other for you. Yeah, it's like one or the other. It's, it's uh, or it, or it's both things yeah. almost. You're kind of saying you're saying that it's not that big of a deal right now, but it, it shows that the yeah. NFL mishandled the Colin Kaepernick situation in some way that they got hit with collusion, and this is just another giant controversy on the league. And yeah, if these continue, one. it will kill the league, and then leagues like the AAF and the XFL, which now exist, could take it. That's pretty much what you're saying. So you're like, right now, it's not that big a deal. More of this shit yeah, like, is a problem. More of this, more of it will be a problem. Yes, and they can't. Uh, they really handled the Colin Kaepernick thing really poorly. weird. Like this did not have to get blown out of proportion. Yes, like, they. Colin Kaepernick kneel. There's some angry fans. Some people see it as a disrespectful sign. Yes, but they and shouldn't have g- conspired like, to keep him out of the league. Like that's a very odd thing to do. Just because someone kneeled, it's like, ooh, that's weird. It's like, why would you do that? Uh, it was bad for business i get it uh, yeah it's bad for business and the whole thing but what they did the way they did it was illegal though yeah the way they could they could have went about keeping them out of the league a lot smarter but the way they did it's called collusion and that's against the law and there's uh another thing that they didn't do the way they did did it all also caused other nfl players to start kneeling and that angered even more fans and they got out of they, they should have the I, very next week stopped showing the national anthem on television. That's immediately like they should have one guy kneeled. All right, take that shit off the TV. <laughs> like, like it's a uh, if, if they don't the show XFL it now or AF, if that year the XFL or the AF were like there, like and they were playing at the same time. Yeah, that could have been disastrous. Of, that could have been disastrous right there. So, Jesse, so you imagine. That's what I'm saying. It's not a big deal now because they've had this all the time. And, and the only reason why they've been able to get away with this crap is because they've really been the only league. Right. But now that there's two leagues here, if they have another controversial, a big one like this, there's two leagues r- right there. They will gladly take those fans. And they, they have, have good football. Be- hey, there's good football too in those in that league. Yeah, there's good football on the AAF at least. And the the XFL, XFL looks like it's going to be the same thing. Too. Yeah, it's 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 and this is going to be Vince's NFL, second run with a football league, so he knows more what he's doing now. Like uh my turn to go on this subject. You think you got your main uh, point out? Yeah, I'm I'm all talked out. You like, think I'm, he should you think he out, should yeah. be able to play though? Like yeah, of course he didn't really break any rules. It's like yeah, well, rules, Yeah, of course uh, he should be allowed back in. That's a silly question. He should be allowed uh, back in if teams are willing to take him. Yeah. If teams don't want to take. If the teams aren't. Well, now he's to take thirty-one. Him, it's like, yeah, if anybody wants a thirty-one-year-old guy who hasn't played in two years, sure. It's <laughs> if a team's willing to handle. If it's honestly, I think a team that will take him would be a team in a not yet. blue area. We're not yet. If, well, not yet. It will. We're not at that part. Him, okay. Go. 
All right, all right. Sorry, I know. I, we have it's a, it's a structured format, ladies and gentlemen. Mania is trying to always break it. Like, come on, man, let's go outside the rules. But it's um, insane. I'm insane. Come on, we gotta break right. the rules. All right. So yeah, I basically agree that this this is a pretty. I think it's actually a little bit more damning of of a situation because of the reasons you mentioned. I think this is another blemish on the NFL, another big black mark on them, another you know the fucking league was wrong, the players were right, the players win again, the league loses again. It doesn't look good with the formation of a new league that's doing very well, well enough to have been bailed out of fucking folding. That is, by the way, the AAF was bailed out of folding by someone who plays, who owns a hockey yes. team. So, so think about that. That, like, if this league succeeds and the NFL just keeps dropping the ball on suspending players for domestic violence, suspending play, well, they they're good on PED suspensions. I don't understand how the fuck they nailed performance-enhancing drugs. The rest of pro sports can't figure out <laughs> PED suspensions, but the NFL, six games or four games, you're done. Bam, see you next. See you in four games. Next time, eight yeah. games. Next time, lifetime ban. It's just like, how has no other sport figured out? But anyway, um, the NFL is full of stupid controversies like this, and this is another black mark. It's not good. Doesn't look good. It's gonna piss off fan bases. Like, oh yeah, that's the reason they settled because they knew they was guilty. Um, I know Colin was the one who settled, but the NFL has to agree to a settlement. You know what I mean? They there there's part admittance of guilt in a settlement. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, well, the P, uh, what over here is the NFL was uh, they're just trying it. to. Yeah, they're done. Know, they were just done with it, and they just didn't they want knew to they weren't going to win. Anymore. They have great lawyers. They fought the concussion lawsuit for how many years? Like 15, 20? <laughs> if they don't think, if they think they'll win, they'll fight it to the death. But they did not. They wanted to settle, which is fine, and I'm fine with that. Yes, Colin should play again. Like we've said, he didn't break any real rules. There's nothing in the rule book about standing for the national anthem. There will be in the next players' union agreement. You can guarantee fucking tee that. Uh, <laughs> they're the only all of the all the other pro sports you have to stand it's just written in the rules because so they don't have this but again nfl fucking lack of competence here we are um it is good like you yeah, said because now okay. now it's gone the league's passed it if he signs with somebody which he probably will here pretty soon i would imagine now that the collusion suit's over all that's gone it, it really it, it's a bad move it looks bad for the nfl but uh, it's over. That's what, mainly honestly with the MLB that year. It was kind of funny to me. The first uh, game of the World Series, not only did they do the national anthem, but they had like a bald eagle flying around the stadium. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Uh, also, so cool. I, like... I have to lead into the next subject too. So I have to lead into the second subject. And now, if Colin does sign, where will he sign? Well, I think as most of the media has reported, as according to his lawyers and I believe his agent. Um, there are probably two teams that will sign Colin. One of them is more obvious than the other. I will give both teams and I will decide between the two teams. Uh, the first team, which is the most likely team in my opinion to sign Colin is the Carolina Panthers. Um, and that is especially true if Cam Newton has to miss this season, which the owner has suggested he should. He should sh sit it out and let his shoulder get, you know, um, fully healthy. He played on it hurt before the last two years. He needs to miss the season to repair his shoulder. Colin Kaepernick would literally plug into that fucking team, into that system. So beaut, it's like a broke down Cam Newton. That's really what Colin Kaepernick is. He's a scuffed Cam Newton. A little bit slower, a little bit uh, smaller, with a little bit better of an arm, to be fair to Colin and Cam. So you can replace him pretty easy. He's going to get along with every single fucking guy on that team because guess what? Eric Reed had zero issues on that team when he came to it. And who was his co-conspirator in the kneeling incident? Oh yeah, it was Eric Reed, his one of his best friends. So not only do they have Eric Reed, they've already proved, you know, the Panthers management ownership has handled the heat. They've handled the wave of already having one of the original guys in it. They know how to facilitate it. They know how to facilitate the media. Colin, Colin would just be a little bit bigger version of that. Carolina, probably a good place for him to go to. Um, so I would imagine that would be where he goes if, Cal if Cam Newton has to miss significant time this year, which he probably will. Um, and then we have the other team, which his lawyer kind of mentioned that has everybody going, what the fuck is the New England Patriots? Because Bob Kraft apparently likes black. Uh, um, he's a big fan of, I, I, I don't know, but the stability of the culture in New England would handle Colin and the media well. It would be shut down. There'd be no media reports about it. Um, that's the best place for him to go for the league. 
in terms of like the league's sake and robert Kraft knows that too probably to take the kid in hide him get him back into football i feel like there's just this weird connection to the black culture and robert Kraft. he's good friends with cardi b and people like that who are really in the strong colin kaepernick movement if you look at the athletes who and celebrities endorsing colin they all really like robert Kraft. And I'm wondering if someone, one of those guys are going to get into his ear, convince him to sign Colin, hide him in New England, rehabilitate him, and then maybe he gets a final couple years on a different team. Or, God forbid, Brady gets hurt, and then we have a backup like Colin in New England. Not a bad, not a bad situation. He, he's, and he would work, at, he's, if he wants to come back and play football and be out of the fucking media, New England would be 100% the perfect place for him to go. Kraft would know that he's fr- he's good in that community with that is really supportive of Colin, and I think that's the reason there's a connection there, um, because I believe Cardi B is very in support of Colin, right? Like that's why uh, she didn't she, do the Super Bowl show. Be. I think that's why a lot yeah, of them I didn't do the shows, is. right? Yeah, that's like Cardi all the. B is pretty anti- yeah, she, Cardi she, B is pretty anti-Trump and all that. She's just yeah, she's pretty she's, she's part of the supportive. Yeah, yeah, there and all a lot of these um like hip hop and that's who robert Kraft hangs out with and it's very shocking uh magic johnson's one of his close close dear personal friends um so you know he's gonna if it's one of two places new england or carolina probably carolina if cam's hurt if he's not maybe new england they can handle it all right i'm done go ahead all right uh for me <laughs> it's uh it's one place for you uh well, the out of the two places that want him, uh, I think the Panthers would be the better choice out of that. And honestly, when it comes to picking a place, it would be it, one. It can't be the 49ers with the fallout between them, and it can't be what I feel like. It really can't be any of the teams that happen to be in a red area, like a red city. Yeah, yeah, because that that would suck. So it would have to be like a. California team that's not the 49ers or like a New e- New England Coastal Carolina team, you know? Yep. And since the two teams that want him kind of match that. The Patriots match that uh, being in New England, uh, Boston, right? Yep, they're and in the, the yeah, uh, Foxborough, yep. Massachusetts. The, uh, the Carol- Carolina is in Carolina. Yeah, and and where yeah. where the Panthers play, they're right in like that college. Like they're they're surrounded by a bunch of liberal places. There's like so five so fucking. Like, there's Duke, North Carolina, NC State, and I believe another major Carolina college. Right, like right near where they play. It's not far off. Raleigh and so, so, yeah, yeah. So so those are the really those are two places I really could take them. For me, I think it'd be better for. I think it'd be more likely, not really better. I just think I feel like it'd be more likely the Panthers. I don't really see him going to the Patriots that much. I don't really see Belichick really uh, uh, really going for the long term. I see Belichick looking for more of a younger quarterback uh, to shadow Brady uh, for, in his like Brady's last two, three years, and then to uh, eventually replace him and and stuff like that. Because uh, I think that's what Belichick wants. And if the backup quarterback, the secondary quarterback doesn't work out, I think Belichick's just, just going to go like, okay, he's not working out, I'm gone. Yeah. But So I think it'd be more, since I think Belichick would be looking more for a younger quarterback, so I think it, I think Belichick will get the final decision on that. So I think he, Colin Kaepernick's just going to go to the Panthers if they offer him a good enough deal. If he decides to test the free agency waters, I'm not sure he, He's going to get the money he wants. So if he's smart, he's probably just going to have to settle with whatever the Panthers offer. Which hopefully, yeah. I, I think they they would offer him a decent amount. Yeah, he's got to be good on money by now, you think, right? Like, he's got to just be like, yeah. if I, if he wants to play football, I'll take a million dollars in incentives. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, yeah, I just want to play ball, y'all. I'm fucking tired of it. All right, well, that's a good first subject. That actually killed 20 minutes. What a shocker. Are we all good? Are we all set? Or if you got anything else, I'm sorry. All right. Nothing. Nope. Nothing. Okay. So now we are going to move on to our next topic, which is going to be um, some quick thoughts on the Antonio Brown situation. We've covered this before on the show. 
um do we think he's going to be traded and if so where we're going to kind of go back on that and i'll go first um yeah he's probably he's going to be traded now that's the newest update because he met with uh, art rooney the owner of the steelers or the president or whatever he is and they both decided it was best for you know either side you know to, to it's mutual to part ways there is no more ill will between the two sides so we won't see antonio brown i think shipped off to a, like a shitty team he's gonna have his say in who wants him he's gonna ha tell you know I, and i and i'd imagine um if he has his say and they actually can work something out he's gonna be playing for the san francisco 49ers next season i'd imagine for a second or a third maybe second and third and maybe a next year second round pick as well you can easily get antonio brown and i think that's what the 49ers should do they're gonna have to eat a little bit of contract but they have a lot of cap and then they should immediately try to sign Le'Veon Bell when the new season starts, who is now an unrestricted free agent, who will not be franchise tagged. He's free to go. Um, I think they are, if they can make this move and actually get Antonio Brown, they um, not only do they pick one of the greatest fucking receiver, the best receiver in the game up right now, they pick up probably no, the best running back. Uh, <laughs> I mean, statistically. Sure. Uh, um uh, just the nut some of the things ab's done is it's incredible um yeah he's a bit of a diva but i think the diva came when he was unhappy with the locker room um you didn't hear about this till he became brutally brutally unhappy and wanted to trade um he was he was he was a saint before this um from what i could tell couldn't you i'd never heard of him being a problem ever just a hard-working uh, fucking beast yeah, this, uh, from what I've heard, like the people who've worked with him before, like his old coaches and all that, were like telling him, oh, this is not the kind of man that he coached. No, they're, like they're all shocked. So, you know, he, I think he just wants out of Pittsburgh. He wants to get away from this culture, this team, Big Ben. I don't blame him. It seems like everybody hates Ben Roethlisberger. He's got a horrible reputation. So I understand the deep desire to get away from it all. And I think, um, yeah, he's going to be traded. They've already said it. I don't think he's a diva. I think any team would be lucky to get him when they get him. And I think that's going to be the 49ers, so that way they can also acquire Le'Veon Bell and have one of the deadliest offenses with Kittle, Bell, Brown, and Jimmy Garoppolo whipping the football around. Oh yeah, Marquise Goodwin also plays out there too. Um, he's a bit of a beast, if you recall this year. Um, no quarterbacks. Well, he had Nick Mullins throwing to him, and he was a beast. Number 11, yeah, he's good. And they have Jarek McKinnon for a two-headed horse uh, with Bell and McKinnon. Um, if they can pull this all off. So yeah, he's going to, I think, be a 49er. Go ahead, dude. I was just quick thoughts. That's all. Quick thoughts. Uh, yeah, I really don't have uh, really anything to argue against that uh, because uh, yeah, I can see him being a 49er. I, uh, the 49ers will probably be looking for a really good receiver of uh, Maybe like another team, maybe the Broncos may be looking for him, but I don't think they just got Joe Blacko. I don't think they'd be looking for another big move like that. I, I also don't think he's going it's to the like, AFC. Like, well, the I don't really see interconference tra uh, thing kind of like stopping too much of a trade, uh, considering that. No, no dude, I guarantee, like I before. can guarantee he's not going anywhere near the AFC. <laughs> Unless he goes to like the fucking Jaguars, he's not going to the AFC. The Bills. Yeah, I thought about the. I honestly thought about the Jaguars, but I don't see him wanting to go. No, there. and and they're they're on good terms, dude. He's going to an NFC team. If he's if they're on good terms, they're sending him to an NFC team, or the Patriots. That's yeah. that's the only AFC team that'll get Antonio or the Colts. I could see the Colts somehow getting him. Uh, One of those two teams. Cool. The Patriots, uh, yeah, I can see them in the AFC. Getting, uh, oh, the Patriots have probably forward. called, probably have called about Antonio Brown every day. Bill Belichick is probably blocked on Art Rooney's yeah. phone, and he's been calling from private oh, numbers. For a receiver. Oh yeah, they the are Patriots are. Receiver. Hell yeah, they are. They need they, they, one. Uh, whenever Odell Beckham was offered, he was like, "Hey, yeah, we'll take him. We'll take him." Never mind, Bill. And the best part about that is, you know, Bills. Bill Belichick has said very, very flatteringly kind things about um, uh, Antonio Brown. If he can get him, he's going to be a Patriot. Yeah, uh, yeah the Patriots, they're with 
Honestly, the biggest giveaway that they're looking for a receiver was the reaction to Odell Beckham whenever the Giants offer. It's it's like they are 100% looking for a top tier receiver. Yeah, and they're it's, willing to trade multiple of their draft picks, potentially the first, second, and potentially three of their first, like the first, second, and second round pick they have. If someone yeah, wants to play uh, ball. <laughs> yeah, the Patriots. Uh, oh, and they're uh, also they rumored to be signing um, Golden Tate. Uh, yeah, uh, Le'Veon Bell. I hope Bell goes to the Texans. He would be a great addition. That's I'm possible. Still I'm still giving out hope. But you think like, you're, uh, you think you're gonna pick? You think you're gonna get Antonio Brown and Le'Veon? I think they're a package deal, personally. But we're not talking about Le'Veon. I, no, we're not talking about Le'Veon Bell. But when it comes to Brown, the Texans are not going. They're not looking for Brown. I don't think they would get Brown. Uh, we already got Hopkins. Um, we got uh, another uh, younger receiver that we just got. That's really good. Fuller. Yeah, we, we're we're good on receivers, especially yeah. when we have the best receiver in the game. <laughs> so uh, it's it's like it's it's hard. Like uh, I kind of want to say this may be controversial in Houston. I'm not. I don't know. I haven't been to Houston in a little bit. But if I go to Houston, this may be a little bit controversial. I think he may be better than Andre Johnson. <laughs> They, they probably already think so. They probably already think so, yeah. But I'm, I'm no, I don't know. And, and, um, Hopkins is pretty underrated. They probably don't think that. He, uh, he's extremely underrated, uh, at least but, outside of Houston. Inside yeah. of Houston, he, we, inside of Texas, uh, he is definitely So where, where do you think Antonio Brown's signing? You haven't said yet. Uh, Probably... Yeah, probably the Patriots. I think they could get him. Um, you think they're gonna? Go, you think they're gonna? Them. You're just yeah, like, of course. Them. You're just like waiting for that video to pop up from me. The Patriots got Antonio Brown. Fuck you, yes, bitches. So now, Here we go. Yeah, now, here's number seven. Here oh yeah, dude. They'll, the next one. they'll win every game the that next... year. Oh no, no. You don't uh, think so? They won't win every. No, I don't think so. Like if. Uh, uh, if and uh, the Patriots, it's it's Brady. He is still good. Again, it's his whole thing. It's he's play smart, not with the, too much of his ability. But if it was uh, some of the previous years, maybe the uh, fit, Super Bowl Fifty One, maybe like a few other years, he, they would have. If they got Antonio Brown, they would not. Yeah, Antonio Brown, they would have won every single year. It's it's the. This year, though, I'm not sure Brady is capable of winning another complete uh, unlosable season. Especially, uh, I think then they're aren't they playing like the Chiefs this year as well? Who's that? The, um, the Chiefs. Patriots. Yeah, the or... Patriots are playing the Chiefs. Yeah, to start the year, I think. Yeah, so so it's like, uh, and when they start the year, it's not oh, they're they they get better later in the year. Like they're beginning of the year, they're not. Oh yeah, we're oh, probably gonna like lose that first game. Yeah, probably. Yes. So, so like, I, there won't be an unbeatable team. Like, maybe once they reach the playoffs, hopefully they won't be. I'm sick and tired of the Patriots. Yeah. All don't right. Want, don't, don't want, uh, uh, don't want more bragging from you. I want to see you suffer. Yeah, you already suffer enough with all the shit I have to put you through. <laughs> yes, I already suffer I'm tired. Of, I'm tired of you. Tired of the three years in a row the Patriots made it to the Super Bowl. We can't make it a fourth, okay? That's never happened. This won't happen again. They aren't making the Super you Bowl. You can't mentally handle it? No. I'm, I'm putting money in out. They are not making the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, shit. Your dog's, your dog's freaking. Everything good? Uh, yeah, there's... Yeah, everything's good. All right. Yeah, all good? Hey, yeah, you want to... Uh, I can mute it really fast. Pause. Or pause, yeah, pause yeah. the recording. All right, pause. We're, we'll take a quick uh, commercial break, and we'll be back in literally two seconds. All right, everybody, we are back. Sorry for that momentary uh, delay. We had a slight, like, you know, dog problem, but that's fine. And we are ready to resume our show. We just finished talking about our quick thoughts on Antonio Brown and all that. So now we are going to move on to um, the Odell Beckham situation. We're going to give our quick thoughts on that. Uh, basically, um, 
we found out that last year the Patriots were very, very close to acquiring Odell Beckham before the Giants decided to inevitably sign him to a long-term contract and void the trade with the Patriots. So the big question is, will Odell be traded this offseason? Will he be traded to the Patriots? Um, and and all that. Um, I believe you give your opinion first on this one. Go ahead. Odell Beckham uh, traded. Uh, no, I do not believe Odell Beckham will be traded to the Patriots. Uh, what I believe this was, was like a, the Giants just testing to see if Odell Beckham was still good enough that people wanted him. It was like a test and... But at least the reason why I think that is because that's what a lot of uh, that's what other people I saw around thought that way. So if because uh, they definitely kind of like back down as soon as soon as the Patriots offered, they're like, yeah, we we definitely want them. The Giants are like, oh, never yeah, mind. Yeah, then they yeah, realized how good he was. They're like, oh shit, okay, the Patriots want him. He's too good to trade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so it was like a it was like a verifying. Is he still good? Uh, type of thing. And it's a. Uh, so I think they're going to keep him, but I don't know how long. Uh, if they don't get a new quarterback, why bother? Eli Manning, yeah, why bother? If they don't get a new quarterback, why bother? They're they're going to keep. They're probably going to keep Eli Manning. I don't know, but if Eli Manning needs to, they need to move on from Eli Manning. Yes, they beat the Patriots twice in the Super Bowl. Yes, one of them, the Patriots, were undefeated. Yes. Eli, it's just, but he hasn't really been good, especially recently. It's it's the Giants, if they don't move on from Eli Manning, I feel like it could be like a an Andre Johnson type of deal, except for uh, a bigger. And what I mean by that, it's, you probably don't know this, but Andre Johnson, like uh, he was with the Texans until like his final year or two uh, because he got fed up with playing with a subpar quarterback in Matt Schaub and he just kind of up and left the Texans. Yeah. Like he, he he loved the Texans. He loved the culture. He loved all that. But like he just up and left the Texans and he went and joined another. Like he was just fed up with uh Matt Schaub and like he, they would they argue uh of course uh and Andre Johnson wasn't really one super quick to temper temper. Like he fought, yes. But he, he was like a pretty polite receiver. Poli uh, pretty polite for a football player, that is, you know? Yeah. So so it, it was like him getting that fed up with the quarterback. It, it was bad. And Odell Beckham, he is a lot quicker to anger and a lot quicker to temper and all that other stuff than Andre Johnson is. So, like, I don't think it matters if the Giants trade him. I think it's... Odell Beckham may just up and leave. Like, even if he likes his team, like Andre Johnson, like the Texans, if they don't get a good quarterback and he's just going to be working with a subpar quarterback the rest of his life, he's just going to up and leave. And instead of it just being like his final year, it's going to be pretty soon, like as soon as he can, you know? Yeah. Like Andre Johnson only came back to like sign for like one day so he can retire as a Texan because he did like the team. And he played most of his career that way. It's just he wanted to get a Super Bowl. So he went uh, with a team he thought would make it with him. And it's just kind of, it, it's sad it didn't work out. He really deserved the ring. Right. Like, Odell Beckham, he's not going to wait that long. He is not going to wait that long. So I don't think it matters if they trade him. They won't trade him, but it don't matter. He's going to leave if they don't do something. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, you, you good? Yeah, I'm good. All right, that was very well well said. Um, I agree with you. Inevitably, I don't think Odell is going to be traded, especially not to the Patriots. If he is, it'll be to some, it'll be somewhere else, like the Colts, um, the 49ers, if they don't get Brown. It just doesn't feel like he's going to wind up in the Patriots. I don't see the Giants handing one of their rivals, it seems, just a piece to just destroy the rest of the NFL. Um, I also think that um, if they don't get a new quarterback, though, I don't understand why they're keeping Odell around for it to be Saquon's team. Basically, I, it just that's a little bit of a mind bending situation if they don't decide to use a new quarterback, draft a new quarterback, sit him for a year, then it's fine. But much like you said, it's what's the point of having him if you don't have a quarterback that can get him the ball where he needs it, which is out in the 
which is pretty much just throwing it deep and he gets under it and beats the guys chasing him. Um, they're not using him properly, which is what I just said. They need to throw him deep and let him get throw him open, basically, and throw him open deep. And Eli is not that kind of quarterback. Never has been, never will be, really, especially not now in his career. Um, so either Odell needs to be moved or he needs to get a new quarterback. And I see the Giants going with getting a new quarterback before they get rid of somebody they just invested a lot of money in. Um, he's a bit of a dick, a bit of a cancer, maybe, but you don't really hear his teammates other than Eli complain about it. So it's one of those things where I'm like, yeah, okay, so the media thinks he's bad, but I don't hear the teammates other than Eli, bitch. And it's just like that with Jalen Ramsey. It's like the media tries to paint him as his bad clubhouse cancer, but I've never once heard one Jaguars player ever say anything bad about Jalen Ramsey. So I'm wondering... What, what, what's the clubhouse cancer? Um, Big Ben is a clubhouse cancer. Aaron Rodgers is a clubhouse cancer. Um, old Randy Moss probably was a really bad uh, cancerous teammate. There were just certain players that would... Terrell Owens, uh, Chad Ochocinco. Guys you know, guys who are talk shit about consistently by fo past teammates, by former, like, current teammates. You don't hear that about... Um, Odell Beckham, you don't hear that about um, Jalen Ramsey. So you know what I mean? Like, I don't really find them to be that bad. I think the teams like them. I think their teammates like them. I think the coaches like them. I think the ownership likes them. The media hates them for some particular reason. I don't understand because they're different, because they're exciting, because they're fun. So yeah, I, I think they'll work it out. I just think they need a new quarterback in New York, one that um, Odell can flourish under. One that has a big arm, and yeah, that's all. Just not the right quarterback. And I would rather see them get rid of the 36-year-old quarterback instead of the stud wide receiver who's got like 45 to 49 touchdowns in 55 games or 59 games. It's it's incredible. He's basically got a touchdown in all but 15 games of his career. So, yeah, Odell. Odell's yeah. the man. He, he needs to stay in New York. New York needs to get him a new quarterback. And then a lot of the problems go away with him. Like all of them will. And yeah, that's it. That's my quick thoughts. I'm We're done with that subject, I think. Any Anything else? Uh, nothing else to really add on Odell Beckham. But time to talk about the AAF. Yeah, all right. And I have to go first on the power ranking side of everything. And here are my power rankings. Um... Only really the big change is obviously the Hot Shots are no longer number one and the Express are no, no longer number eight. So basically this week I have at number eight the Atlanta Legends. I find them to be the worst team in the league. They've scored all of, I believe, 18 points um, and they've looked bad doing so. They look really slow, sluggish. They haven't found any rhythm. Their defense is bad. Their offense is bad and just it's not good so they're the worst team in the league they're also 0 and 2 and they have had no chances of being anything other than 0 and 2 so now we move on to the actually i'm going to do something a little different than everybody thinks and i'm going to call the stallions the next worst team so at number seven Whoa. i have the uh, salt lake city stallions and that is because they've shown nothing wow. in two games they've literally not shown anything they scored nine points in the first game and six points in the set or six in the first and nine in the in the um, second and I know they've ran into the iron one of the best defenses in the league and they also played the commanders who have a terrible defense as we just no offense but they just gave up like 40 points to the uh, Apollos um, and I don't mean that anything rude or anything but that's a lot of points to give up and then and then you struggle to score six against against the team so yeah i often i often wonder um with the with the uh so that's why i have the stallions there their defense hasn't looked the greatest either um I, yeah so they, they went from fifth place last week for you to like to seventh now they are the seventh ranked team in my opinion um so it goes legends and then stallions because they've looked bad on offense very inconsistent um, I know they play two good teams, but they, it doesn't really excuse the fact that they don't have offense and their defense while it's been pretty good It's just not that impressive. They haven't played good games. They haven't looked good in their losses 
And then we go to their... Their defense looks all right. It's not that... It's just not impressive. You know what I mean? It's just like, okay, they exist. It's actually the second worst. (laughs) What, their defense, the Stallions? Yeah, the Stallions is the second worst. They give up a lot of yards. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're just... They've they've only given up um, 15 and... Uh, what the fuck else? Who they, yeah. they twelve? So twenty-seven points. It's not that many, but still, that's there's not a good defense. Um, it's nothing wowing. They didn't look good in their losses. So so far, I have Legends, then the Express, uh, then the Stallions, then I have the Express, who a lot of people probably have as the worst team in the league. But I think that is a team that is going to get better as the season goes on. First week they look got downright terrible. Second week they almost beat the Hot Shots. They were winning that game until the very end of the fourth quarter, 18 to six with 10 minutes left. Um, so they showed they can score, they can lead teams, they can play against the good teams and look decent doing so once they get warmed up, confident. Christian Hackenberg looked good and they played the hot shots, one of the best teams in the league. That's why they take a giant leapfrog because they looked good in their loss. They looked very, very competent in their loss compared to the other two teams who looked awful in their losses, in both of their losses. Um, all three of these teams have not won a game yet. So, you know, it's kind of by choice. And I think that the Express looked a lot better than the Stallions or the Legends. And then that means at number five, we have the Fleet. One and one. I, they looked pretty good beating up on the Legends, but that's expected. So they go right there. The Commanders. Um, the reason I have the Commanders just ahead of the Fleet in my power rankings. Um, I've looked at both their team's wins and both their team's losses and... One team looked better than the other one did in the win than the other team. Like, the Fleet beat the Legends. Who cares? Um, The Commanders beat the Stallions. So, it's like... The Commanders beat the Fleet. Oh, oh, yeah, that's why. That's exactly why I have it. Uh, The Commanders beat the Fleet. They're both one and one. The Commanders won head-to-head. That's all. Um, So, they're ahead of them for now. That's literally the reason. Um, Then I have the Iron at number three simply because they've... They're, they're terrible on offense. They, If you watched that game against the Stallions, they should have blew them out. They were the 12-9 to 9 win. Um, they had like 50 chances on offense to do something. Receivers just drop every pass. They just they average like three plays a drive. It's just like, whoa, okay. So they're getting lucky by winning. They just have a very, very, very good defense. So if you can score more than their defense, which has been, they've allowed nine points this year, which is fucking incredible. Um, They've only scored though, uh, 29. No, they've scored like 30, 35 points and they've allowed nine and they've had like fucking 70, 80 offensive plays. Think about that. They've had a lot of drives. They've had a lot of possessions and they've only put up 35 points. They're lucky. Their defense has allowed less than 10. Um, yeah, that's it. They have a great defense. That's about it. But they're also undefeated. And then we have the Hot Shots undefeated. They struggled to beat the Express. So naturally, they're going to fall. Um, they have very good offense. Their defense is so-so. We'll see how they look. And then, of course, obviously, the Apollos are the best team in the league. Far, far, far in a way, they're the best team in the league. 77 points. or it's, Yeah, 77 points through two games. 680 yards by their quarterback. Um, he's an impressive guy. That Gabbert fella or whatever his name is or Gilbert or whatever. Um, the Apollos look good. A lot of those guys might end up in NFL camps in the offseason, at least some of the you know, very specific players. Um, Steve Spurrier shows he's showing he's still got it. They look good, and they're the number one team. So just to go over that, Apollos 1, Hot Shots 2, Iron 3, Commanders 4, Fleet 5, Sta- uh, Express 6, Stallion 7, and Legends at number 8. Take it away, Mania. Your turn for the power rankings. Okay, uh, my power rankings, it's, uh, I'm de- determining this a little different from last week, and I decided to set up uh, a series uh, for me to determine how my rankings will go, uh, because I wanted to take out, unlike Rob here, he probably doesn't have really a favorite team except for whichever one looks the best. Uh, yeah, I don't I care. have a team, yeah, I have a team to root for, and so I need to take out my biasness i need to take out and i also need to take out like some inconsistency like if i uh, rate one team one way but then ignore yeah. it in another team i can't i can't really i don't want to do that so first uh what i do is i 
score their offenses and defense. I do that not really by the yards, but mostly by the points scored. Like if or how many points your offense can score, and then how many points your defense allows, and then I rank them, and then I combine the score. Obviously, the lower the score, the better. Like the number one ranked Apollo with the number three ranked defense on the offense. Apollo has number one ranked and number three ranked defense. So it's the score of four. So it's the lowest score. So they're ranked one. And then if there's a tie, uh, I look at their head to head game if they have one, which all, uh, with this league, every team's going to ha- eventually have one. And if they're, if, it's a head-to-head where they have like two games because it's division and they tie it out. Uh, I look at the win-loss record and if that's somehow tied, I will look at their win streak. Yeah. And so, starting at number one, like I said, number one is the Apollo- Apollos. They have the number one scoring offense uh, with an average of 38.5 points per game. And then the number three ranked defense with the average of 17.5 points points allowed per game and then so number one number three that's a score of four they're number one Birmingham Iron was actually right behind them they had the number one ranked defense but the number four ranked offense with a score of five so they're right behind the Apollos in in this power ranking and then the Arizona Hot Shots are right behind (laughs) the Iron this is like really close the Iron had a total score of the, the Hot Shots had a total score of six. Uh, they had where are they? Uh, the number two ranked offense, so the second best right uh, behind the Apollos, and then the number four ranked defense. So like right behind the Apollos in defense as well, but they're uh, number three because it's a total score of six. And then I got to the Commanders and the Fleet. Uh, the Commanders, they have uh, the number three ranked offense and number five ranked defense. The fleet have the number six ranked offense and number two ranked defense. They both tie out at with a score of eight. They had one head-to-head game. So as of right now, the commanders, uh, they lead in that rank area. So they're ahead of the fleet. If the fleet somehow win tomorrow, they'll, uh, well, they'll tie out. But right now, the commanders, they're four. And so San Diego, they moved up from sixth spot to the fifth spot. In six, I have the Stallions, and the Stallions have the number five ranked offense and the number seven ranked defense. So, and that's a total score of 12. They're well behind. And then there's the Express. I, I don't have the Express last either, which surprised me because I honestly feel like they're the worst team. But opinions aside they ended up uh actually passing the legends so they went from eight to seven the stallion not the express they have number seven ranked offense so they're tied for the worst offense and then the number six ranked defense and then the legends are also tied for the worst offense so they're both offenses they both scored on average the same amount but the Atlanta Legends have allowed more points, so they're in last place. Yeah, all right. So you you want to go over your list really quick just for very simplistic? Uh... Uh, simplistic. Number one, Apollos. Number two, Iron. Uh, number one, Apollos for offense. Number two, Iron, mostly for defense. The Hot Shots, number three. Uh, they're right behind the Apollos in offense and defense. The Commanders right. are four. They uh, they're tied with the fleet, but they wanted a head ahead. So no, I mean like just like four, one two, one tried. is the Apollos to the Hasha, not like the X. Ex- I that? yeah, I heard the explanation. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, Apollos, yeah. Iron, Hot Shots, Commanders, Fleets, Stallions, Express, Legends. All right. Thank like you. That. Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> I do because dude, it's no, it's not trying to be rude or anything, but you know that was a lot there. That was a lot there. Yeah. That's fine. Um, it's no. I'll What's we'll up? Do it next time. Cause... Yeah, now we know. We know how your um. Now we know how it breaks down and everything. Yeah. And we have one subject remaining now. It's our just our final fleeting. Some final fleeting thoughts about the AAF. Yeah. Mania, you can go. You go first now. Okay. Just what you think, everything, and then I'll go, and then I will end this bitch up. Go ahead. 
uh, the AAF is uh, it's right now really interesting for me. It's intriguing. Um, the commanders. First off, I really like that my team that I like that I chose because it's you know in Texas, San Antonio. I like the fact that they chose uh, San Antonio. I like the fact that it's an Adam team and I like the fact that they're really good right now they're uh in essentially look like a playoff caliber team already but even without that the games look really good like the first game you already got like a hit where a player lost his helmet which was amazing and there's no flags the close games like uh and if there were really close games there were surprising games that don't make sense the express gets shut out one game and then they score like crazy the next game it's it's uh unpredictable and i and i like that right now because i don't know what's going to happen and i like that it's it's just i like the unknowing i like the hits i like how everything's just it's smooth it seems like the only problem i have is with the app but that's an, that's not the league i just well it's part of the league it's just the app sucks <laughs> The games are they're fun to watch they're I, I just think it's a lot fun to watch there's uh stuff that don't make sense in this league right now when it comes to them playing it's and i and i like that it's uh nothing much to say right now why don't you give it a go right um basically what i think with the aaf is um it's troubling that it folded <coughs> but <coughs> Or that it was close to folding, or you know what I mean. It was um, it needed a like two hundred fifty million dollar bailout by the owner of the Car- sorry I'm I'm sorry I lost I coughed really hard there by the owner of the Carolina Hurricanes, which a lot of people then had to look up what the fuck is the Car- oh it's a hockey team okay um, so th- just in case you didn't know the the Hurricanes owner bought it he owns yeah, a hockey team NHL yeah NHL. They, they, NHL, okay. Yeah, he decided to buy the entire AAF to keep it oh, afloat yeah, because I... because of one simple fact. The league is doing very fucking good. There is no one would spend half a billion dollars on something just to keep it going because it's fun. No, that's not how it works. The league is doing good. It's going to do very, very well. The play is exceptional. The coaching is very good. We've seen exactly what we want to see. We've seen every team look better week to week on every aspect of the ball the in plays the play is improving we've seen three comebacks we've seen a shootout this week um only one boring game in the 24 to 12 game between the between the style uh, the fleet and the legends but the legends are kind of a bad team they're the only team kind of fumbling around causing any problems but that's fine seven out of eight teams are fun they're good to watch we've had fun games um all i think there's been what eight total games technically that could have been played only one of them has been boring i mean really the rest of them have been fun um they've been different they've been hard hitting it's been exciting play i mean i i love the AF the direction it's going and the fact that it was bailed out for half a billion or a quarter of a billion dollars shows that other people in big places think the same thing this is worth to have it's gonna be good fucking keep it going the ratings have been great it beats the nba already so I oh, like yeah, the AF. Yeah, the, the AF. And the fact that this, the Hurricanes owner, I think that actually has to say something more about the, that. That a uh, hockey this, team owner bought the hockey, league. Not just uh, the Hurricanes. The Hurricanes, I'm pretty sure, are having attendance issues themselves. So I'm not. So if, if a Hurricane, the Hurricane owner didn't think this league was going to do well, it would have helped. Yeah, them. he wouldn't have. He would uh, not have put half a, a billionaire doesn't risk a half a billion or a quarter of a billion just because he feels charitable that day that's not no. how that those people don't make that kind of money doing stupid shit and the na and this is not a stupid shit move so no, the, i'm out I'm that's pretty much it i'm very happy with the aaf yeah i'm happy with the aaf too it's, all right uh, it, it'll bye bye until baseball and once baseball starts and if once baseball starts i'll probably be more your bye bye football need, <laughs> yeah bye 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 football oh, all right everybody uncontested all right everybody um that is the end of this episode of uncontested um if you enjoyed the episode please leave a like on the video uh subscribe to my channel if you're new here or mania's channel as well if you have not done that yet 
it's in the description down below please leave a comment on and you know your thoughts on any of the debate here today what you think you can add your own thoughts me or mania or me and mania will both comment back on the um the comment you leave we'll talk to you we'll you know we'll hash things out as we always try to do on this channel mania do you want to add anything before i close it off uh, i think you no, you got everything you i got everything. everything yeah no i'm pretty good about that all right everybody well, that is the end of this episode of Uncontested. I hope you tune into the next one, which will have our baseball predictions for a potential, a bunch of them. You know, like MVP, uh, Cy Young, uh, Comeback Player of the Year, uh, uh, Division Winners, MLB, you know, all sorts of fun stuff coming. It might be a longer episode than usual. Me and Mania still have to talk about it. I hope you tune in, and I hope you're just as excited for the Mar. Um, for I think the Mariners and the who the fuck is the first game? The Mariners and the um. I don't know who the first game is. I just know when my team plays. <laughs> Mariners play somebody very soon, so I hope you're ready for it. Everybody, we'll see you next time. Have a great evening. Peace out.